Hello guys, I'm ready with uh, today's video. Today we are going to talk about the difference between the phosphorylation, both the kind of phosphorylation, oxygen to phosphorylation and the photophosphorylation. This is the one concept which is very difficult to, you know, understand, you know, several times. The many students, they always, you know, claim, they find it very, very difficult. Let's, you know, make it easy and uh, I'll try to make it comparable so that you can have an understanding of these two concepts. So I'm just, you know, the putting these two together, you know, and I'm trying to make you understand exactly how this process is going to happen. Fine. Let me just, you know, give you the background. Phosphorylation means the synthesis of ATP. If it is a photophosphorylation, photo stands for light. In the presence of light, if the ATP is being synthesized, then it is called as photophosphorylation, which is required during the photosynthesis. That is the part of the light reaction. Whereas, if you talk about the oxygen to phosphorylation, so all the NADH and FADH2 created during the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, this is going to be converted into the ATP. Roughly, if I go with the you know recent concept. So one NADH will give you the 2.5 ATP, whereas the FAD, one FADS2 is going to give you the 1.5 ATP. Fine. How this process occurs? So there'll be two ways, you know, we can make it understand. One is that, you know, the coupling. Another one is that, you know, the chemiosmart theory, which is given by the Peter Mitchell, which faced, you know, Peter Mitchell, uh, a Nobel Prize. Now, Let's talk about, you know, this exactly, before I go into the detail, let me tell you one more thing is that, you know, what exactly is the coupling? Here, the every step, the electron is going to move, you know, uphill to downhill, where exactly the problem or the, you know, advantage it is having is that, you know, when whenever an electron goes from uphill to downhill, it has a tendency to release the energy. And that energy is going to be utilized in pumping up the proton into the uh, space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane in the case of mitochondria. You call it the Christie and the outer membrane. Whereas the same proton is going to be pumped in the case of uh, chloroplast, where this process is going to happen. It will go into the lumen of the thylakoid membrane. Okay. So uh, exactly not all the places. If you look at the oxygen to phosphorylation, I'll show you in the diagram as well. It has, you know, the four different complexes. If I add the ATP synthase into that, so it is going to be the complex number five. So complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex, you know, four, and the complex five. Whereas the complex one, three, and four, they're working like a proton pump. What is it, the uh, uh, meaning of the proton pump? It is a protein through which, you know, the proton can be pumped into the inter or pericondial space or the space between the inner and the outer mitochondria, mitochondrial membrane. Similarly, the, there's only one proton pump which is available with the chloroplast, which is present on the thylakoid membrane. And once, like, you know, the proton is going to be pumped, it will go into the lumen. And that lumen is basically the place where the H plus is going to be pumped through a single proton pump that is called a cytochrome B6F. Now, let me show you the, all the, uh, you know, the complexes. First, we'll discuss about the oxidative phosphorylation. Then we'll try to, you know, uh, apply the same process with the, you know, uh, photophosphorylation. Look at these are the four complexes. They're called as, you know, the complex one and the complex two, complex three and complex four. And these complexes, if you look at carefully, what we'll come to understand is that they're found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So they're the place like, you know, where it is found is the place we call it as the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Like if I make the mitochondria over here, if you look at this, So this is the place where exactly they're going to be situated. So complex one, which is also called as NAD, 
the NAD reductase, which is having the prostate group like the FMN and the FES, and the complex two, which is also called as the succinate coenzyme Q or the succinate reductase, and the complex three, which is a coenzyme Q or cytochrome C reductase, but the complex four that is called a cytochrome oxide that is the last in the line. And if you see this, except this one, complex number two, all the three, they are the proton pumps. They work like a proton pump. So these are the proton pumps through which, you know, the proton is going to be, you know, moving. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide and we'll try to figure it out exactly what is going to happen the next. And there are certain, you know, the agents which are the, which could be the chemicals, which could be present over there and uh, which can play an important role in blocking this. So, emitol, retinone and the pearson dean A, they're going to work on the, you know, uh, the place we call it the complex number one, whereas between cytochrome B2, cytochrome C, obviously it's a part of, you know, the complex three where exactly uh, the antimycin A or the bile is going to work. And the last one, if I'll show you, this is the place where we are going to have the cyanide, carbon monoxide, and sodium azide is going to work. It's the last step where the electron is going to be transferred to the oxygen. Okay. And the, the you know, certain uncoupler, there's a difference between, you know, the uh, inhibitor and the uncoupler. Inhibitor is one which will not allow the electron to move from the one carrier to the other, whereas the uh, uncoupler means it is the one which is going to uncouple the proton pump or the pumping of the proton along with the electron movement. I just told you in the beginning, the once the electron move from the one place to another, from uphill to downhill, it will release the energy and that energy is going to be, you know, uh, capitalized in, in order to pump the proton into the, you know, the space between the outer and the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This is, you know, diagrammatic one. You can see the Christie's over here and uh, complex one, complex two, complex three and complex four. And here the, you know, the once the electron move from the one to two, two to three, three to four, this is going to, you know, the uh, vary or this is going to, you know, move as per the, you know, the down. It means the energy of this is going to be more complex one is having the highest energy than the complex two, than the complex three, than the complex four. So every step there'll be energy release, fine. And this proton pump is going to work and the proton is going to be pumped over here. So that is going to create the two, three things. One is that, you know, there'll be difference in the charges on the either side, this is, you know, matrix and this is the space. So there'll be difference in the charge, the one thing. Second thing is that, you know, it generate a proton motive force because a lot of protons are there, which is raring to come into the matrix back. And the third thing which is going to happen is the electrical gradient, which is going to be created. And the place through which the proton can come, that is the only place, it is through the, you know, ATP synthase, which is the complex number five. Take it. And then, you know, uh, we'll go further. Let's see what happened, you know, the next. This is the ATP synthase. You can see the different subunits are shown. And if you see clearly, what will happen is that, you know, once the, the proton will move through this part, this is called the FO and this is called the F1. Okay. So one which is on the membrane is uh, water insoluble and one which is, you know, towards the matrix is the water soluble one. And once the proton moves through it, it is going to rotate this and that is going to create energy and that energy is going to be utilized in converting the ADP into the ATP. And here, like, you know, the, the loose binding site where the ADP and PI is going to bind. And once it is going to be rotated and finally, the ATP is going to be created out of here and the ATP formation is going to take place. Let's try to understand the mechanism. And first, you know, before I go into that, uh, 
I'll just you know the uh, give one more view of the photophase correlation, and keep in the mind if I make it clear. So basically, the in the case of oxidative phase correlation, electron is being driven from the NADH, and the final acceptor of the electron is going to be oxygen. And once it will take up along with the proton, it will be converted into the water molecule. Whereas in the photophase correlation, this is going to happen you know other way around. Here the electron is going to be given out by the oxygen and uh, water is going to split to give the you know the proton electron and the oxygen molecule where you know this is going to give up the electron at the ps2 photosystem 2 and this they have the only one you know uh, the proton pump that is called the cytochrome b b6f complex through which the proton can be pumped you see this you know the the another diagram shown at the bottom where it is shown that you know the PS2 is the place where the water is going to be splitting up and the lepton is being released. And there's only one proton pump through which the proton is going to be pumped. And uh, another structure, the same, just to you know, the make it different than the mitochondria is the CFO, C stands for chloroplast, CFO and CFO, this is the ATP synthase, the same one that we have discussed just time, some time back. This is the probably the best diagram to you know uh, make you understand. Again, I'm not going into the cyclic and the non-cyclic part. I'm just trying to make you understand exactly what is happening. You know, uh, if you see this, this is this is going to work on a redox potential. So here the PS2, which is you know working at the six eighty nanometer, it will take up the you know energy in the form of photon, and this photon gives off the and make it you know activated activated means it is the one which is not readily giving up the electron so once it gets up the energy and gets activated and you can see the potential redox potential if you see from this side so this difference is going to be here you can see the uh, initially if you see so after getting you know the energy it is going to be at this and in the beginning it was somewhere here so this is the difference which has been you know made and that is a difference in the you know energy now the electron giving ability of this p680 is better and it will pass on the electron again the electron will move you know downhill and that is how this energy is going to be utilized in the pumping of the proton and once the proton get accumulated in the uh, the lumen of the thylakoid and once it will come back, there's the only place to come back, you know, is the uh, ATP synthase through which it will come and it will, you know, give up the energy. Let's make it, you know, the things more clear in order to uh, understand. Just I'll show you on the board once more. So let's say this is the mitochondria. And this is the matrix. I write the M. And the proton is being pumped over here with the three complexes one, three, and four. And then the only place through which it can come is the ATP synthase. So this theory is also called as the two factor one is a chemical coupling, another one is the chemiosmotic theory, which was proposed by the Peter Missel, who got Nobel Prize for it in the 1960. So what exactly is the chemiosmotic theory? Chemi means chemical, osmotic theory means that its movement is happening you know, as per the concentration gradient, we know once it is being pumped, this is going to be the active process or the, not really the active process, this is going to be, you know, passive process because the, uh, or it is going to be an active process where, you know, the energy is going to be required in order to pump the H plus ion into the, this, you know, empty space between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Again, I repeat, this is going to be the active process 
where this is going to happen and their energy is going to be driven by the electron which is moving from up hill to down hill and they're releasing the energy and this is what we call a chemiosmotic theory coupling is that you know the here the two thing which is coupled together one is the movement of the electron the one thing and second thing is that you know the h plus pumping they are very coupled with each other anything which is making way the h plus ion to go inside the matrix will reduce the number of the atp form as it happens in the case of polar pair or the polar faces where there is one protein because of thermogeny which is going to make the way or you know the uh, i had shown you the the two fold dnp which is again the one of the uncoupler hopefully you are able to understand this concept we'll see you in the next lecture when uh, we'll plan soon and uh, hopefully i make my concept very very clear thank you for listening me and do comment and anything which is else required in the future we are just going to you know do that thank you thank you for you know uh, hearing me patiently